Hey! 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 You say you want me to sit here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure? Hello, Atlanta! What's up? Hello. I'm a mic, what? Yep. You know, it's hard out here being a pimp. <laughs> what is the man on the day? <laughs> I have been <laughs> for the rent. <laughs> what is <laughs> With and that uh, gas money spent. <laughs> Ambassador. You know it's showing hard being a pimp. <laughs> Ambassador, since you said that, how did you feel when Richard Pryor mentioned your name in live, one of Richard Pryor's classic stand-ups, since I'm a comedian, mm -hmm. he mentioned Ambassador Young's name live in Live on Sunset Strip. How did you feel? What did you say when everybody said, Richard Pryor just mentioned your name? You're live in Sunset Strip, yeah. No, that was what he was saying about, uh, he was talking about black men, we yeah. better leave that alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We better leave that alone, yeah. Okay, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we better leave that alone. Oh, I'll tell you what. It ain't nothing but a peanut. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was classic. <laughs> but um, we've asked these. These are my outside children. <laughs> They, they, you know, I have watched them grow up, and one minute they were just little hoodlums on the street. <laughs> and the next minute, they stars. And that, that is a very hard transition. And the ones we have here are the ones that made it. And for everyone that makes it, there are probably a dozen or more, a hundred or more that kind of fall by the wayside. And it's not because they're not talented. It's probably because they don't learn how to manage or handle money. Mm -hmm. And they don't have anybody. So we're here talking about financial empowerment. And the money that runs through the hands of our athletes and our entertainers is enough to change our communities, but uh, you are amongst the few that have been able to survive and make an impact on the community. And I kind of give you and the mayor credit, all of you all, the fact that uh, they made uh, Black Panther 80% here. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And um, right. your industry is what, a $9 billion industry now? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. In Atlanta. Yeah. Bigger than Los Angeles and over. Hollywood put together. Yeah. yeah. How how you do that? Uh, I'll start off by saying um, my name is Chaka Zulu. For those who don't know, um, I'll start off by saying that entertainment and sports, well, couple that together, is a, is our natural resource. Amen. It is a real natural resource, and we have to cultivate it and mine it as such. You know, like I said, you know, one day we were doing one thing. You know, and then the next day you become stars, right? Um, but it, if it wasn't for one, of course, situations and community which we came from, then you know, the, to, in order to grow past the different levels, you have to have help or support, which comes from the community first, and then that extends outside the community. Um, and the hardest thing, the hardest part, is keeping the money within our community, yeah. and what we have to do to maintain that. Of course, to achieve commercial success, they tell us you have to cross over. And they've been saying this since you know, music has begun when mm. a lot of the doo-wop gang, I mean, doo-wop uh, uh, groups had to, they like, oh, we gotta cross over to make money and we gotta do all these different things. And if you remember the old Five Heartbeats, why they never cross over to us? The, the old mm. Five Heartbeats saying, well, if They're we, doing it now. Right. Yeah. It's, right. And, and <laughs> bringing it full circle, yeah. if we mine it, if we take our natural resource, if all they're gonna give us blacks is sports and entertainment, then we need to control it. You know, if you see what LeBron James is doing, mm. he's taking way more control of his career. Um, you know, even with the collective bargaining agreement when they had the lockout, you know, some of the top players told the younger players, don't cross. We, they started floating each other money. They was taking care of each other. He was like, okay, yo, Kobe was paying some folks. This per Shaq, everybody was paying people. They're like, nah, we got a big, now you got people on the end of the bench making 50 million that never play. 
because of the uniformity of the of the of their cause. So you know that's part of how we and how that, we do it. So we, the athletes can hang together that way. Mm -hmm. But it, that's hard in your business. So well, yeah, I think that <clears throat> I think for us it's it's a lot more bravado involved in what we do. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot. It's a lot more competition. Although there is uh, an unspoken support that comes from this community within Atlanta, regardless of whether we agree with one another, we like each other or not, we're still going to support it because of what's best for the city and what's best for uh, the commodity, the number one commodity of the city, which is culture. And culture allows us to platform ourselves in different arenas, whether it's film, we're telling stories that relate to the culture, whether it's music, we're still, you know, singing songs that relate to the people from the culture, whether it's fashion, we're selling clothes that appeal to the culture. The culture is the number one commodity and that allows us, you know, so many different avenues to, uh, to, to I guess, expound upon financially. But you know, we've had here some of the top 10 economic people in the world, in the country, mm -hmm. through here this last week. And I was with one last night, and when he heard that you were coming here, he said, oh, yeah. He said, I got his music on my, rec on my, on, on my phone. Oh. <laughs> so so you, you have... Why, he was Caucasian, conservative, Republican, hmm. uh, in charge of $12 trillion of financial movement. But he got your record on his phone. Right. So I'm saying that you knows about the hustle. He knows about the hustle. No, you have, you have a, a power and an influence that integrates America. It does. And you make people feel good about the way you pop your fingers and whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that, that when, when you're down mm. and one of your old records comes on or you start telling stories or you start clowning and carrying on, uh, it's, let's don't underestimate that. Right. Most of us preachers basically are frustrated comedians. <laughs> <laughs> If we could, if we could talk dirty in church, we could make a living. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh my god! I, I think I, I think that there's a lot to be said. You know, to your point, hip hop transcends culture, religion, age. It's 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 truly diverse, and it's the it's the number one genre. Like in the world, hip hop is the the most influential genre in the world. It brings in more 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 uh, profits than any other than country music, rock and roll, R and B. Like hip hop is the thing that brought the world together. If you can't agree on anything else, you can agree that you know when. 50 Cent in the club, come on, you know, y'all, everybody dancing together. We can be arguing and we'll, we ain't going to agree on the same football team, basketball team, but when uh, nothing but a G thing, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg come on, everybody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so hip hop has brought the world together and I think that because we are artists and, and, and we operate from the most artist driven part of the brain, that kind of it, it gives us a different capacity when it comes to our financial planning because a lot of us take much, much more significant risks because of our belief in our art. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have people like, for instance, Kanye. You know, Kanye, they said that he was, you know, in a, in a place of uh, financial discrepancy, but what he did was, he, that's because he chose to put all of his money into his art. All of his money, he said, if I'm gonna bet on anything, I'm gonna bet on me. I can't convince them to see what I see. I can't convince you to see what I see, but I know what my art can do. I know what my work can do. So even though it's unconventional, even though it, 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 it may come at some, some 
just highly disagreed upon opinions, I'm still going to do this and believe in, in belief of myself. And now we see where Kanye is because of that mentality. Now there are a lot of other people who ain't exactly Kanye who did the same thing and they didn't, they didn't come out so oh, well. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but even with but, uh, even Martin Luther King was a hard sell in the beginning. When my parents and friends found out I was coming to Atlanta, they said, Lord, please don't hook up with them trifling Baptist preachers. They ain't never going to mount to nothing. <laughs> oh, man. Don't let your son get hooked up with them. They, they, they ain't about nothing. They, and what, what did your dad tell you about Martin King, by the way? No. That's what he said. <laughs> uh, what, when, he told me, when he told me you were going to be a preacher, what did he tell you? Oh, no, when he said I'm going to be a preacher, I, I, I told him I was thinking about going to seminary. He said, well, all the preachers I know are either poor or crooked. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I, I'm not going to waste my money on that. If you're going to do that, you're on your own. But I was thinking, Chris, about the, y'all's role is m much like my philosophy of stress. And, and Bastion, before you pivot on that, let me go back to T.I. for a minute. I mean, I'm going to suggest that what you just said is an and conversation, not an or conversation. Yeah. Because most of our mentors here and his friend is Quincy Jones. He's my mentor. We were just at his house a few weeks ago. And Quincy told me a couple of things that just they stopped me. First of all, I don't know anybody else who can lose $200 million in a Time Warner merger and still be worth $300 million. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, but, but Quincy told me one day, if you think you're in the music business and you don't own music rights, publishing rights, title rights, licensing rights, if you don't own some kind of rights, you're actually not in the music business. You're just a temporary performer. That's true. And so, yes, c unconventional approach. Yes, bank on your arts, but bank on your art. In other words, own the product sure. underneath the talent. Don't just rock a mic, bounce a basketball, or swing one. Own the bat cage, own the stage. And I think that there's some interesting and important lessons from Quincy. And I think you have lived what I'm talking about, so I'm not yeah. telling you any. I just want to make sure the audience is hearing it's an and, not an or. What were you about to say, Shaka? This, it is a slightly disjointed conversation. So to, to start with Tip, you, you, they would consider us the wayside folks, the people who fell by the wayside, the lost, the lost ones, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to be do-it-yourselfers. When I say it's a natural resource and you have to mine it, that means you have to dig. You have to come where it is. You have to find some land and you got to dig. So you got to find communities and you got to dig. You got to you got to approach the youth. Then when you start realizing what the youth are into, then you start putting structure around it, right. where you invest in it, right. or where you you know you develop it, and then you start to see what's really possible. Right. Because if he would have had early investment, he would be. 20 times surpassed where he is and probably not had to deal with any mishaps or missteps through the process. Same yeah. thing here, same yeah. thing with anybody else. Yeah. So we need, when I say natural resource, early investment is structured, then you take it into the business perspective. Right. What does that mean in business? What is it, everything is asset driven. Right. right? So what are the assets in entertainment? Did you guys hear that? Everything is asset driven. Right? Everything has to be connected to an asset. Yeah. Sure. And, and then so what happens is, if you're not a do-it-yourself or who has the, the gut, the grit to pull up from your stomach, figure it out, got friends, you know, whatever, hustle, and then figure out how to make it happen, you, you look for an investor. Then when the labels come in and invest, they're like, well, yeah, we'll invest in you, but we need everything. Yeah. Now, you're not educated. Right. So, you know, I mean, somebody believes in me. Right. Okay, well, give me $30,000 and I'll give you everything <laughs> that comes out of my body. Right. All right. And if, if not for certain people, do, he was a do it yourself or we were do it yourself first, went independent, started our process, used that to leverage up. Because yep. negotiation is about what you ask for, not what you, what, uh, what you uh, deserve. You right? You should have. So they, they, you got you to you negotiate to get what you want. You never, they're never going to give you what you deserve. Right? And that takes leverage. Do it yourself first, get that leverage. But part of that, which goes to what you were just saying, um, is we also get a, an arrogance about we've done it ourselves. Mm. And it takes a minute to get to that space of actually working together where you get to the CBA and the collective bargaining agreements that the athletes get to. Right. So we're all in the same boat. We're right. just at different stages. But if we get in earlier, any early investors are the ones who get the, the best reward. And if we can get, right, right. So if you get in with us, our youth, 
our communities, and we start to mine our natural resources, even if it's just sports and entertainment right now. Right. We'll get into the doctors, lawyers, actors, or whatever else. Sure, sure. But right now, this is what they're giving us, then we need to control it. And I mean, Atlanta, like you said, is the, is the front running leader where we lead cultural hip hop. So we're the, we're the literal hub of hip hop, which means everything in the world is affected by what happens in the we neighborhoods, control, in the we, cities we the that culture. we do in Atlanta. We control the culture. Mm -hmm. You know, the things that we do uh, out here effortlessly, unconsciously, how we live our lives and wear our clothes and lingo. Yeah, how we speak, you know, uh, those things, they catch on. Yeah. You know, those dances that you see people doing, Everyone. the dab, you yeah. know, like that went from here. It's in Africa. That went from here <laughs> to around the world now to where, you know, you go to the cool kids out there in the hood now, they're like, man, what you doing dabbing? Come on, man, get out of here. Listen, <laughs> you know, but it's just something that small and seemingly insignificant to someone who doesn't have eyes that fit the culture. They wouldn't understand it. They wouldn't see it as a commodity. And my last point would be until Cam Newton does it, you know, what on I'm a saying? commercial level, on a commercial level. And my last point, I know you want to get to Chris, is that this is not a new phenomenon. We've seen this happen with black culture our whole lives. So but the, the thing that's different is, is the timing, yeah. you know, whether it's with post Wakanda, everybody, we, Atlanta's Wakanda now or whatever it may be, <laughs> or the Trump era. Like now it's about circling these wagons and investing in ourselves. And then our finances will become way more. So just to be clear. Okay, Ambassador Young, what was you going to ask me? <laughs> I can't wait no more. I can't wait no more. No, no, it's Since John ahead. Lewis interrupted us. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What was you well, going to well, say? Well, I want to hear from the wise man. Well, hold on, Chris Rock. <laughs> hold on, Chris Rock. <laughs> hold on, Chris Rock. Hi, Jamie Foxx. Hold on, Chris <laughs> All right, okay, Ambassador, what you was going to ask so, me? So, hold on, hold on, Ambassador. Hold on, hold on. So, Shaka, T.I., we want to make sure the audience is hearing us clearly. You said asset. Mm -hmm. Everything is asset based. Mm -hmm. You said invest in the culture. Mm -hmm. You're a venture capitalist for your own talent. You've mm -hmm. invested venture capital mm -hmm. in your own talent for a return, mm -hmm. which in large part you own. Mm -hmm. And if we, can come, if we can convert that culture into something we own and control, it's a asset. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, I want to be clear that, that it's culture, it's all that, it's good feelings, but it's also business. It's show business. Sure, however, but I'm saying you have to, we have to convince the, the, the formal uh, institutions of finance okay. to see our culture as an asset. Got it. You see, because right now they just see it as things kids do. Got it. And so when I go in and I say I need uh, $1.5 million to do uh, uh, a documentary about the dab, just hypothetically speaking, you're going to say, get out of here. I'm not spending $1.5 well, 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 how, how do we monetize it? Okay, well, you don't, people don't know exactly all of the different places that these assets produce fu funds. And, right. and, it's, and kind of, it's hard to determine and dictate that ahead of time mm -hmm. without prior knowledge, you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you've never experienced it, if I want some money to shoot a video, you're like, well, how am I gonna get my money back? Okay, well, I'm gonna tell you, well, you, can, you get X amount of dollars for streams, and you know, we can, but that seems foreign to you because you were already trained to fit your thoughts of investment into this box. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So we gotta get the, we got to get the people who control the finances to think outside the box so we don't have to spend so much our own money. That, got it. Is there any way that uh, we as a community, people in this room, can help you with your ideas and your performances and things? What can we do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that. Go, 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 ahead, Chris, go, 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 go Chris. Chris. No, no, no. First of all, I want to I want to thank Ambassador Young for it, it's just an honor and a blessing to have him here with us. Because you got to think about without the sacrifices, what he has done and so many others, Martin Luther King, none of us would this evening be possible to walk in a hotel. To, you know, there's so many countries that's still behind because they didn't have people that gave their lives. 
and died for us to have, you know, as African Americans and so many others, women and other minorities, uh, they really, when I, I, I love history, I love history and I watch a lot of history and I said, man, the things that they went up against. And I, and, and I, and I encourage you to go to the African American Museum in DC. You see, it's unbelievable, it'll change your life. You know, the suffering that my ancestors been through and, and, and many other people's ancestors in, in different races, but, but particularly my African Americans, what they've been through coming over here on the boats, going through slavery, all these things. I take all that into consideration for where I'm at now and where this generation is at right now and all the opportunities that I've, I've had and, and given. And uh, it's just a blessing. But, so thank you so much, Ambassador Young, for your sacrifice and, and, and everything you've done. It's, I, I, I'll answer that question. If it's about what you can do to help, and again, it's, it's so vast. There's a, it's a million rappers, there's a million people that want to be in the entertainment industry and everybody doesn't um, deserve to be or, you know, I mean, you deserve to live you your dreams out. You can say yeah. it. <laughs> you deserve everybody to live your dreams out, but good. everybody ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> but, All this stuff ain't good. <laughs> but what I, what I would say is when you realize or when you start to see a seed sprout or, you know, a person matriculate through certain levels of business. You say, well, listen, they went through all of these different things and they got to a particular level, then you start to meet them. You know, even if you're not an early investor, then you come in on the second round or the third round, right? When you sit there and you look at everything that he's been through and everything that I've been through and we've got to a certain level now, okay, okay, well, those guys gotta know something. There's well, gotta be some value there. You're a manager, you're not an entertainer. Yeah. Exactly. However, mm -hmm. he still has a commodity because he obviously has a keen eye for talent. Right. So if he walks into yeah. a room and say, this guy is gonna be the next thing, then you have to give him credit for the times he said that and he was right. No, that's right. It's called a transferable um, skill. Right. But you it's, know what I'm it's also, you also are managing talent. Right, but if you can, if he- And personality. But, and this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is storied, if you can, if you can run the streets, if you can sell things in the streets, you can run a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he, right, he can, if, you can, if you can control a gang, you can run an army. These are called transferable skills. We're just, you're just not putting the people in the position or the place to actually use the skills in a positive way. You know what, I taught a class when I was in my, um, my forced extended education. <laughs> 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 what is going on today? <laughs> I love, I love. What, what class was that? Ele <laughs> elevated learning. Uh, Wonderful. I, yeah. Yes. Now I, I um I, I taught a class and it, it was called thinking thinking outside of the box and how how to take the skills that you already had as a criminal and applying them to how you do. <laughs> well, let me say, hold on. I mean, really, every, no, I mean, no. every criminal has a skill. No, but, uh, it can no be, absolutely. And don't, don't laugh. Yeah. Seriously. Don't, don't laugh. Yeah, this is. That um, he was innocent. He was set up. And he was serving time that he really didn't deserve to serve. I won't. I'm saying that. I'm saying that. But, but if not you, uh, but hold up, hold up. If not, if not hold you. Hold up, wait a minute. No. If, if not you, there at least half of the brothers out here who are in jail would not be in jail if they were not poor and black. This is true. Okay. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is that, that, that just as you are embracing that mm. and saying how you turned it into a positive experience, mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of what happened with Nelson Mandela. The kids that went to jail with Mandela in Robben Island for 10 years, came out calling that Robben Island Nelson Mandela University. Mm. Mm. See? Uh, and um, I re remind people all the time, half of the books of the Bible were written in jail. Mm. That's true. See? That's true. If Martin Luther King had written a letter from the Ebenezer office, <laughs> <laughs> instead of a letter from the Birmingham jail, Nobody would have paid any attention to it. Yeah, that's true. See? Yeah. And so I'm saying that, that we are 
in an alien culture and quite often we become needless victims. But that should not make us look down on ourselves or each other. Right. And you're absolutely right that maybe you needed it, maybe you didn't. But regardless, you learn from it and you've grown from it and you're helping others. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Whatever experience we have. Sure. Now you came out of, out, out of show business and went back to where? Clark Atlanta University. Clark Atlanta University. <laughs> and got your degree. Yes, sir. All right. And he's a businessman now. You know, you asked a great question, as you usually do. And it was the involvement of the community and, and, and especially here in this wonderful place we call home. And uh, there, there's a lot of great opportunities, especially having taken over the number one market for movies in the United States. Um, we had so much, uh, people don't understand that we weren't so much just battling against like New York and California. Most of our battle was actually from Canada. Mm -hmm. we, we, were in, we were in a global uh, fight, you know, of uh, what they were trying to do outside of the States. Um, and when the Writers Guild, the Directors Guild, and, and uh, the Actors Guild got together and created this report, they realized where the millions and millions was going. And, and it wasn't California and it wasn't New York. It was, you know, Toronto and, 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 and different parts of Canada. But I think part of what we need as some of the projects that we're working on uh, is that there's a lot of different uh, businesses that's literally outside of just where the studio's at. That's where they're hurting at right now in California. I don't know why they didn't change the rules to kind of get back some of their business, but uh, we'll take it. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> but there's a lot of uh, ancillary uh, community jobs that, you know, that plays a part of how a studio gets made. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of great ideas. We're, we're needing scripts. You know, we, we need writers. We uh -huh. need more entertainers coming from here. We do a lot of movies here, but the uh, actors aren't from here. There's no infrastructure. You know, so mm. we're, we're, we're still going from mm. other places to get our talent and, and some of the production people are coming from over there. So as we continue to grow our base, that's what we need from our community. You're talking about, you're talking about the, 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 help me out, the electrical workers, the, yeah, you can give me, yeah. absolutely give me some love for that. Can you define a little bit further, like what are the opportunities that you're looking for? Okay, for instance, you go to a movie and you look at that in credit. The actors and the, produce, the producers, uh, writers, they're gonna be about this much of the credit. The rest of that three, four minutes you're looking at, that's where our, your base is at. All, all, all the rest of that list you see on your end of your credits. You take time, most people kind of cut out. Down, Absolutely, yeah. every, every piece of that. If you take a moment to Boom. look at the credits, most people walk out. But when you're walking out, you're walking out on all those, those uh, opportunities, these careers. Because these aren't jobs. These are careers. That's right. Yeah. Well-paying careers. Skill, the yeah. skill set <clears throat> is so high that it cannot be a job. Mm. You, you, you got to know that you know that you know uh, on how to expand because of kind of the questions that you have, have in mind is the, there's so many uh, advancement in technology and so much advancement on what's going on. And you got to kind of have a little bit of a history of what's going on, what has happened in our industry from film to TV to music. And if you come in here, coming inside of the, the business on day one, and you're doing what was done five years ago, you know, you're going to get laughed out the office. Uh -huh. That's been done. We're trying to go to the next level. So there's a lot of uh, assets, a lot of economic growth, and yeah. our base that we haven't yet created. And all that base, that's, that, that money that's coming here, but it is not staying here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. So I'll, I'll, I'll amend that. So what Mary was talking about is infrastructure. There's no investment in infrastructure. Atlanta's a flow-through city. It's been like that even in the music industry. Repeat that. Yes. It's a flow-through city. Flow-through city. Right? You come here. You, the beauty of Atlanta is it's accessible. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can come here. You can, be, you can 
been lame when you was home, but when you come here, you can be the, the toughest, bro. You can be whatever you want to be. When you, come. you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, right? It's like the internet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when you come here, but like I said, people take it out of the city. So Hollywood is here. We got these incentives for another 10 to 12 years. But if they up and leave tomorrow, somebody gives them a 50% incentive, we don't have any infrastructure where we could develop and cultivate our own natural resource. I'm going to keep going back to natural resource if y'all haven't gotten it yet, yeah. right? But the infrastructure, who does this? The drivers, um, licensing, zoning, I mean, you name it, all of these opportunities are there. Part of that challenge, and I'll swing this quick pivot, is that we have participation in the city level, but we don't have it on the state level. So I do know that there's a governor's race getting ready to come up. <clears throat> I hope y'all hear me. And we need, to, we need to be looking at putting that on, on the board because, yeah, Atlanta sh shot most of uh, Black Panther, but the state is what generated the $9 billion. Now, You know what I'm saying? So it's not just Atlanta. We get some good stuff, but it's, it's shooting everywhere. Um, but again, infrastructure. Yeah. You know, what are the things that allow all these other things to happen? And we dealt with that in the music industry, and, and, and it was a gift and a curse. You know, when L.A. Reid was here, you had infrastructure. When he left, we all had to fend for ourselves, and we had to become do-it-yourselfers. Mm -hmm. And it, it worked because it, it made a lot of us millionaires and plus just doing it ourselves, and it gave us the knowledge. Now we need greater investment in the knowledge that he's cultivated just through his process, myself and plenty of other people in the city, that if we do it right now, we could build the infrastructure, and we can control it for however long we want to control it. Yeah. And another thing I think that music as a commodity has to be acknowledged in a different light. Because just like you can go on paper and you can show how much films bring here, I can show you two, three times that over, over, over the course of a decade for music. Music has brought more concerts here. Music has uh, employed more people with studios and more entrepreneurs have been able to sustain their success, whether they're, uh, whether they're talent or executives or, or produ whatever they are. Right. But we don't have a tax credit. Mm -hmm. We don't have a consideration. We haven't been incentivized to stay here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so, so I, I think, but, but that's the thing, and that's what I was talking about when I said the people who are in control of the finances and the formal institutions, they look at what we have generated millions of dollars from still as like a game, like a play thing. Like this is, oh yeah, that's cute. Nah, well, you know, we just made $12 million, you know, so. Why doesn't that count for next time when I want to do the same thing that just made $12 million? Why are you still treating me like I'm begging you for something? So, I'm, you know, you're educating me. I'm sitting here and I'm learning from you of what I, I, a sort of a gap and a need. I'm listening to you and I'm hearing you. So, Ambassador Young, if you don't mind, you're the honorary chairman of the Board of Operation Hope. Uh, and I hope I'm not going to give Dr. Nita Ward, our president, a heart attack when I say this, but I am the chairman and the founder. Um, <laughs> uh, this is not much, T.I. This is, this is not much, but it's a start. I'm going to commit two things. Again, I, this idea is like three minutes old. But, uh, one, I'm going to put together a group of institutional lenders and capital providers and venture capitalists. Uh, I'm going to ping my guy, Tony Ressler, who's a billionaire here in town, a bunch of others, and get them on the list. I'm going to get their boys in a room, or ladies, whatever they say, and we're going to learn from you and from whoever you put together. We're going to learn this art. We're gonna, uh, to, if you want to teach them, I'm going to commit to you. They'll commit the time, and they'll be open to learn the business, to understand how to underwrite these sure. credits. That's number one. But that's not enough, I don't think. That's all right. No, no. That's a start. That's a start. That's a start. So we're also going to do, I haven't done this in 25 years, I don't even know what I'm saying, but we're going to put up a hope fund. It's going to be $500,000. I'm going to put up the first $50,000 to fund the kind of projects you're talking about. Don't ask me the underwriting criteria. I have no idea what I'm saying right now. <laughs> we're gonna, but I'm going to put up $50,000. We're going to find another $450,000 from Smokes to start somewhere so we can begin to, to, to do some low-risk projects in your space. They, we got to make sure they work. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, I, I told you that stuff didn't work. Right. But I'm going to put my money where my, my mouth is. We're going to put up some money. We're going to do it this year. 
and then you guys can do what you want. Right, so to save you and protect you for just jumping up, jumping out the window, right? <laughs> a lot of what we're talking about, even though we're pinpointing some of the issues. Wait a minute, excuse me, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 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 look, look, secure the money first, secure the money first. Thank you. Thank you. Don't throw the money out. <laughs> Let's get this. And, and, and it's true, we, we accept. <laughs> but. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say, we're pinpointing a, a lot of the issues, but it's not like we're, we don't have at least ideas and answers on how to fix them, or we're in the process of doing some of those things. Even from this tax credit and things like that, hey, we've made small steps where now music incentives are attached to film, but we need our own incentives because we have our own different culture. So that's what he's stating. So all of the things that we're talking about, yes, there are answers to that. And investment is key, but the other element of that is um, infrastructure within our industry and bringing our ass to the table. So it does make sense because we don't, and we, I've seen people do it. I've been, you know, somebody, I ain't gonna say no names. They'll go into certain meetings, whether it's Coca-Cola or different companies or whatever. I come in the meeting behind them and they done ruined all the money. Mm. Because, you know, again, People can present themselves to be whatever, you know, everybody think they're the mayor of Atlanta. You know, everybody, ah, that's my city, it's my city, not, you know. But if you ain't this guy, respectfully me <laughs> and a few other people, you, you can't touch every corner of every aspect of the city. And, and we say that humbly in the sense of, again, the levels that we went through in our careers to be at this point, that deserves investment. Even if you didn't invest right. 20 years ago, we're still doing it on a high level, and he can literally, you can look on paper and see how much money he's generated from the first record he's made no, to the last no, film. No, Shock, it offends me that you have to even explain this. It, it, is, it, is, it hurts me. I understand what you're saying. It hurts me that you even have to explain this. It should be obvious, all right? Well, he didn't need to talk to me for an hour about this. I mean, he said, I don't know, five sentences. Mm -hmm. it, it made the first time he said it, it took a minute, all right? Second time, okay. But by the fourth time, I'm thinking about what we can do about it. So all I'm just saying is, I get it. I, it's a big miss. You shouldn't even have to, you, this shouldn't be a problem, right? But it's also an opportunity. Right. 100%. Now, now here's the beautiful, now I'm gonna tell you, I don't want to return on our money. We want our money back if we can get it. But when you're doing venture capital, who knows? I just want to make sure we, what I don't want is have an embarrassment where somebody say, ah, we, we sh I told you we shouldn't do that because I know, you know how that happens. Right. As long as we do it right, if it works, it works, if it don't, it don't. But when it, if it, if it hits, let's make the money go right back into the community Absolutely. that we're serving so that other people get a benefit to live up. Let me, um, we, we sought out of time, but I, I just want to say that uh, you all are part of this movement that John and Ron and all of his buddies started in Los Angeles. And he doesn't like me to say this, but he's got more nerve than a brass ass monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know where, yeah, I, and I kept yeah. trying to figure out where did this brother get so bad? <laughs> and finally I figured it out. He grew up with Soul Train. <laughs> okay. He was a Soul Train dancer. Okay. And so oh, really? was Rod McGrew. Yeah. Okay. For and real? Where, they built their, where they Man, built their self-confidence to put the biggest economic conference that's ever been put together in Atlanta okay, was doing that little thing down, down <laughs> the so What is he on the day? When you got, no. when you <laughs> <laughs> missed it. Uh, Do it one more time, guys. Yes. He did Do it, James. Do it one more time. Help him make that. Yeah, that was. That's it. Woo! We can go. That was that was an impressive move. <laughs> that but was, woo! Right I'm mean, more impressed with the stitching in them trousers. <laughs> <laughs> that you was. Your suit. <laughs> oh Whoa. my God! Man, that this suit made out of vibranium. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir.
Oh, well, thank man. you very much. I didn't know you knew how to do a split, man. I, <laughs> You don't tell me everything. You don't want to hang out with Michael Jackson. You should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michael couldn't even do a split, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he couldn't. I'm going to just say, I'm, I'm a, I know we get ready to wrap up. I just want to say, because I know it's entertaining and we've talked about a lot of things. As a, as a people and as a community, all our issues are compounded. So the, for the early investors in the room, get to the early investing. For the people that like to wait and wait till it's scaled and see, like, let's, let's create this infrastructure of how we develop and we get our youth culture and our youth and our community developed up. You've seen the guy, I forgot his name, he's Richard, who just sold Shea Moisture. Mm. And in, in his sale, he created a fund to, to reinvest Was into other. Richard Lou Dennis? Yes, Richard Lou Dennis. Richard, Richard yeah. Lou Dennis. This is Roland Martin over here, by the way. Yes, sir, Mr. What's Martin. up, Mr. Martin? How you doing, sir? And in the sale of his company, he created another fund to invest in companies similar to his in, back in our communities, specifically more so with, uh, I think, women. Um, but he's, he, I'm, it's just saying that, you know, you got all of this wealth, you, got all, you control these funds, you, you control this opportunity to trickle down, trickle down a little bit. You know, it's like water the flower, it sprouts, water it some more. You just keep, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just you got to, you know, have some some balls, you know, or some some. some oh my some, goodness! Something. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Did I say a bad word? Nah. Um, I so, think everything he's saying is absolutely correct, man. And he speaks with a different uh, uh, skill set and a different knowledge of of the business from, you know, the the back line more so. You know, I'm 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 more even though I have some information some information from hanging around people like him and Jason Jeter and, 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 uh, and so on, God bless the dead, but Shaquille Stewart, you know, I, I've soaked up more than most people in my position may know, but how, how to balance the books of a tour, like that's, that's, that's him. You know, how to make sure asses in the seats, see that's me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, this Got is some a great asses in these seats. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Alrighty. cut his mic off. What we have, what we have to understand, right? What we have to understand for you guys as investors, what, what's important is you got to understand the skill set of the person you're speaking to. Don't look for me to balance the books right. and don't look for him to put the asses in the seats. You got to know right. the talents of the people that right. you are investing in. Right. Yeah. And that's the only way you can uh, adequately judge whether or not it's going positive yeah. or negative. No, that's a very, look, I, I've, I've been learning something. God gave us two ears and one mouth. We listen twice as much as we talk. That's right. And I try to learn something every day. We were at a session last night with NBC, MSNBC with uh, Reverend Al Sharpton and Joy Reid and it was uh, Phil Griffin of NBC and Philippe Bourguignon. It was really beautiful, this documentary on, and Ambassador Young is in it, of course, on the lens, the power of the, the lens, the media on the civil rights movement. And Reverend Al Sharpton said something that just blew me away. He said, I repeated it a couple times there, I'm going to repeat it again. He said, uh, people say I'm not, in the, you know, I'm not giving solutions or whatever. He said, look, when, I, when we're protesting, we're not trying to create a solution. We're trying to raise awareness That's right. to a problem. That's our job. That's right. He said, when, so he said, well, at, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, all you want is media attention. He said, yeah, that's all I want is media attention. <laughs> In other words, and so I didn't realize before he said that, the value, the singular value of that action, and he knows his lane. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, Bravo, Reverend Al Sharpton. Yeah, but I'm in a different lane mm -hmm. trying to create some solutions. That's right. I'd be a lousy protester, but I'm really good at what I do. Right. You just basically said the same thing about yourself and yeah. about Shaka, and heaven knows if Chris ain't funny, we all of us, there, ain't no, there, there ain't no church on Sunday. So, you know, <laughs> we're all, we all in a different lane, but together we can create a beautiful... Mosaic. I mean, one thing that we got to also recognize is, the, uh, and I said this earlier, I'm going to say it again, the culture is what powers every commodity that leaves out of this city and brings money back. Without the culture, without, if people wasn't going to Magic City or the Gold Room or uh, wherever it is you go to have a good time and enjoying this music, 
then it wouldn't make the top one, the hot 100s. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be like, it starts with the culture. And what I believe happened to the music business is they wanted to remove the power of the art from the artist. Mm. You see, in the golden years, you know, where, uh, let me see, I think it was 96 through 2000, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. When, when, you know, you said three, four million records, when, you know, Master P went from a drug dealer one year to a half a billionaire in two years, and everybody looked up like, whoa, hold up, man, this, we got like seven, eight black guys from projects mm -hmm. with hundreds of millions of dollars now, and they, they giving us they ass to kiss. We have, we need to hold up on this. So I believe this is just my little conspiracy. <laughs> I believe a bunch of people who, who had a lot of influence and things got in a room and said, "We can only let them get so big, or else they won't need us." Mm. Okay. So what they did was they removed the power that was in the art and they put it into technology. So now. You don't think that you are supposed to go and pay for a song or pay for an album. Mm. But you will pay for the app that will allow you to listen to the songs for free. You see what I'm saying? So that, that, that is kind of what happened to the music business. Uh, in, in, in maybe what, 2005 or yep. six or right. something like that. Uh, but what we have to recognize is music, an album is an experience. You know what I'm saying? It's an experience. You sit down and you listen and you, it's like riding a roller coaster when it's done right. You know what I'm saying? You got peaks and valleys and twists and turns, loop de loops if they're good. Um, but you can't get that if you just listening to a bunch of songs that people decided to throw together on a playlist. Right. And like you don't get that same experience if you don't get to flip through the booklets and read who produced this and you know what I'm saying? Even the thank yous I used to read. You know what I'm saying? We grew up. Like uh -huh. they don't have that experience anymore. And I think that is another to, to find a way to get the power, the equity of the art back into the hands of the artists. I think would do all of us a great service. Let, let me just say that. <laughs> let me say that I we are we are bringing a great conference to a close, but you all are opening up a new dialogue, a new business opportunity, and I don't know when, but. Um, some young brothers got a nice place together called The Gathering Spot. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They spoke, and, they spoke uh, here. Mm -hmm. huh? They spoke here this week. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I'm saying that we need to gather there mm -hmm. sometime in, in the near future. Yeah. And we need to think again. Yeah. What, is the next, what is the next round of this battle? And we have waged in a battle forever. And uh, it's not going to end. But whatever we get knocked down, we get up. And um, what you say makes good sense, but there's an answer to it. Yes, sir. And I don't think the people who own the technology have the answer. I think the people who have the passion, the culture, and the art are here. Yeah. Right on. And maybe we can get together a couple of nights and um, have a prayer meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord will make a way out of no way. As, as, always. Right. as always. As always. Does anybody want to have any closing uh, remarks? Uh, Oh, you know what? <laughs> I've been trying to talk all day long. The last time I get up with these smart Negroes. <laughs> all I know is funny. You put it together? I sure did call every last one of y'all. <laughs> uh, but honestly, you know, they, they, they all said some great stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm in the movie business. And the movies, movies are the biggest export we do in America. The biggest business America got. So... 
uh, I'm in the right business. But Emmanuel <laughs> was saying the right thing. We need more writers. We need more. Uh, two, of, two, two of my family members got jobs in the movie business here. So it's jobs here. And I, I visit all the studios down here to uh, talk with them. And then I, they was telling me stories about dry cleaners or getting more dry cleaning, uh, uh, more, more stores because they dry clean. Uh, they clean everybody, all the studios clothes. They clean Tyler Perry's studio clothes and and um, uh, Pinewood's clothes. So it's it's a lot of money out there to be made. And Don't guys, forget the hairdressing. You got and the hairdressing. They got to, you know, people got to get the hair and makeup. makeup. So it's a it's a lot of uh, money out there to be made. And also, you know, I've learned in my in my career, I made a lot of money. I was once the highest paid actor in Hollywood. I could once once. <laughs> Not right now. Don't be asking me for no money. <laughs> No, but saving your money and also not getting into debt. You know, I think, thank God I learned at an early age. I'm still a young man. I'm, you know, not to, no more debt. I done had everything I ever wanted. So, you know, my thing, and I could just stress to you guys, try not to get in any debt. Uh, I was at my riches when it was, was no credit cards. I used to hide my money under my mattress. Mm. Used to back in the day. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, try not to have any debt. Try to, uh, you know, be smart with your money and try to plan uh, for the future. Uh, and you, you, you're going to be all right because you're going to live a long time. You're going to live a long time. Now, I, case, I pray to God. In case there's any young, any young people in there who, who, who think that Chris has set the bar of their financial expectations up a tad too high, if, if you going to ball, okay, if you going to decide I'm going to go splurge $50,000 on a watch or $150,000 on a car, this is a little tool I use. Just buy just as much property. So that means if you want to buy a $50,000 watch, go buy that $50,000 watch, then go get you a $50,000 piece of property somewhere so it balances out. Yeah. You know it. what I'm saying? That's it. Now, you got to make a little more money, work a little harder, maybe lose a little sleep, but you feel better about it, you know, in days to come. Like they said, they're not making no more properties, no more land. So that's, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So we all respect and admire Ambassador Andrew Young, and we are all standing really on his tall shoulders. Uh, I can't say enough for my play father. He is, uh, he is hilarious. He is brilliant. He is amazing. Uh, he is unpredictable. Uh, uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't know of anybody else in the world other than the late Nelson Mandela hmm. who has this kind of pedigree and he has 125 honorary doctor degrees. I got one. Mm. Can we, before we say anything else, I got one last thing to say, but can we before I say anything else, let's show him our appreciation right now. Thank you, we love you, Ambassador. Let me, um, let me share with two pieces of advice that uh, one I got as a child, the other as a young adult. The first one was from my father when I was four and the Nazi party lived, was on the corner of my house, Highland Hitler. He said white supremacy is a sickness. You don't get mad at sick people and you don't let them get you upset. Mm. Don't get mad, get smart. Mm. See? Now the other one I got from a fellow like you by the name of Red Fox. <laughs> oh, God. And Red Fox said that the greatest danger we face as a people in an oppressed society is stress. Stress and anger and frustration will kill you. Yeah. So, Red Fox had what he called a new soap to wipe away, to wash away the stress in your life. Mm. And it was F-U-G-G. <laughs> and his slogan was, if Lux won't do it, if does won't do it, fuck it. <laughs> hey. This dude right here. This dude right here. This dude right here. <laughs> Take this picture. Come over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Take a photo right here. Yeah, hold on. Let me show you a photo. Come here, Ambassador, a photo. Hey, on a serious note, 
I don't want anybody to have any illusions of what brought this together. Chris Tucker must have been on the phone with me a dozen times in the last week. I asked him, did he want a car service? No, I got my own. Do you need me to pay anybody? No, we good. Can, do I can't do anything? No, you useless, John Bright. <laughs> he, call, he, he called Shaka. He called T.I. He called, he dragged the manual here at the last minute. <laughs> He did, Chris Tucker did this out of the goodness of his heart. Oh, okay. Please thank Chris Tucker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Huh? Hold on.